Matt, what's up? You got the M16 for nope. the barrel profile guy. I've got the M16 for the barrel profile. Why is yours so much thinner? I mean, why is yours so much thicker? Durability, obviously. Performance, speed. Accuracy. I mean, what's it look like underneath the handguard? I mean, it's, I bet it's pretty thin at the base. Well, yours is thin all the way through. Let's talk about our barrel profiles. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today. Matt, what's up? We're with Classic Firearms, and today we're here to talk about something that you guys keep asking us about, and it's barrel profiles. Awesomely enough, a lot of you out there are building your rifles for the first time, building your ARs, and uh, a lot of you guys do have questions about, oh man, I don't know what barrel profile to go with. Like, you know, I really want a heavy barrel. I really want that thick goodness of the heavy barrel. I want thick that accuracy, boy. that's right. But. My intended purpose is to be hiking around in the woods with it. Probably not gonna work. Yeah, so uh, not to say that it can't be done, but there are better it's, options, it's right? It's leg day, I guess. It could be, very much so, and arms and back and every other part of your body that you wanna be in pain. Uh, but what are some of the more popular barrel profiles out there? Why do they exist? And let's just go ahead and start off with a story that I wanna talk about. Uh, because the government profile barrel. The barrel profile that shouldn't have ever been. Uh, this is actually a pretty interesting story. And the M16A2, and it was under development in the 1980s, mm -hmm. they were looking to replace the much thinner barrel of the M16A1, something yeah, like that pencil barrel there. It's longer, but yeah. That's right, and you can actually see between these two here just how much thinner the 20 inch barrel is on the M16A1 that you see here in comparison to the A4. It might be a little bit difficult to pick up on camera exactly, but you guys get the idea. All right, so they were moving away from this lightweight, cool looking son of a gun. But why, Clint? Why did they want to move away from that? So what they found was there was a lot of barrels bending, or so they thought. They thought. So they thought that they had a lot of barrels bending, and whenever these Marine Corps armorers were doing a drop gauge test, they noticed that it actually wouldn't clear the barrel. Mm -hmm. So it actually wouldn't go all the way down, and therefore, it must be must, bent. Barrel must be bent. Makes sense. So why would these barrels be bent? Well, us jarheads, first of all, are not easy on our equipment. No. And uh, one thought was, well, whenever they're using a bayonet and these very aggressive drills, they must be going in and then stabbing and whatever. Or, or maybe they were using their bayonets attached and, uh, and prying open crates. And therefore, they must be bending their barrels. So when the M16A2 started becoming under development, they're like, sweet, we're gonna keep that same length of barrel ultimately, mm -hmm. but we're gonna thicken it at the part that's bending the most. Well, I mean, that makes sense, right? You reinforce the thing that's getting damaged. Right. But keep in mind, this is a government profile, so at some point, this is not gonna make <laughs> sense. And here's where we're at. So, yes, they thickened up this part right up here. Granted, they also made that the heaviest part of the barrel away, the furthest away from the shooter. Logically, not the most sense, No, but they did find too that because there was added weight towards the end of the gun, that helped reduce muzzle sway, and they actually did find an increase in marksmanship. Okay, cool. But when they further started doing more tests on these guys and they went back and started testing those bent barrels, what they actually found was that there was a burr on the inside of the barrel by the gas port and a lot of copper jacket that was fouling the inside of the barrel and this building up over here. Mm -hmm. And so about the same point where the bayonet would attach here at the bayonet lug, right. that's where that drop gauge would stop and they're like, barrel must be bent. Never mind all the crap that you're seeing on the inside of it. They used a video recorder and found all that and they were like, hey, is it too late to go back on these barrels? Government's like, nah, yep. check's already signed, dog. We're sending it. <laughs> you know, if you bought $13 billion of barrels, you'd probably be like, that's what we're using anyway. I guess, man. So, but anyways, I thought that was a pretty funny story to kind of kick this video you know, off. It kind of reminds me of. What's uh, up? So, it's like with the Gleals and how they incorporated a bottle opener onto the oh, yes. rifle because they're like, hey, our soldiers are really screwing up every magazine because they're using the Philips to open up beer bottles and stuff. Yeah. So like, nah, we can't have that. So they just actually just incorporated one right into the rifle. Yeah, well, a bottle opener is a lot more efficient than... A brand new barrel. Yeah, now granted, that's not to say anything bad about this profile barrel. It's been working just fine for decades now, and that's cool. 
But in some situations, they've actually kind of reversed that idea. Mm -hmm. You take a look at the M4 profile barrel here, where again, they've kind of strengthened up the front end of it. They have the grenade launcher apparatus here or cut, and then your gas block latch you meet up here. What you'll notice is, is it's a little bit thicker back here towards the chamber, which makes the most sense. Right, highest that, pressures. Right, and so then it tapers off a little bit, saving a little bit of weight. Well, then they came out with the SOCOM profile barrel, and this one's actually pretty cool because it this one makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Pretty much take this whole idea here and flip it around where you keep that same type of thickness back here that comes all the way up and then meets up at the gas block, and then towards the muzzle it starts to taper off. So... Yeah, that makes sense. That's where the most heat is and pressures, yeah. Right, you know, uh, to preserve accuracy, uh, you know, this heats up slower. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the heating up of the barrel is what kind of causes it to be able to sway more and yeah. get a spread of accuracy. Um, and then even just kind of like barrel life, right? You know, uh, stiffness, harmonics kind of thing going through there so that maybe it will last a little bit longer barrel life. Yeah, and it makes sense. And you'll see this become a little bit more popular over the course of AR history. And like the M4A1s, like what I have over here, that's the type of barrel that they usually go for as an M4 profile or a SOCOM profile, uh, where again, it's a little bit thicker back here, and that's exactly what it looks like it is. You can see where it tapers just ever so slightly yeah. from the chamber. This has the RIS-2 rail on it. I don't feel like taking these nuts and stuff off. Uh, so, but anyway, so it does have that thicker back here, thicker portion back here. And these guys were made for fully automatic fire anyway. Not this one, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, so, as you or can imagine, it. yeah. <laughs> so, as you can imagine, they wanted it to be a little bit more. Uh, I guess you could say, be able to withstand <laughs> that type of rate of fire. So, the pencil barrel, though, is awesome. If you're looking for something the to OG. be the OG, ultimately, if this guy. So, this is a ballistic advantage here, five five six barrel, uh, one and seven twist, forty one fifty chrome molly vanadium, vanadium. However, you say that word, vanadium, vanadium, whatever. Uh, metals and <laughs> anyway but this barrel works great especially for what most shooters do mm -hmm. i mean again the original m16 also fully automatic fire stuff like that they did they worked the barrels worked fine right they actually did very well and if you are wanting something a little bit lighter around lighter to carry around then sure something like this makes sense and you know what's great if you've held a rifle that's got a pencil barrel like this kind oh, of yeah, or like the uh, this Fostec has or like a, that Fostec has a fax. It's in it amazing it's... how light that rifle feels, despite yeah. the fact that the barrel is longer. You know, yeah. this 20 inch barrel feels like it's yeah. two thirds the pound of like yeah. an Air 15 that's got a shorter, heavier barrel and a quad rail and all that kind of stuff on there. Yeah, uh, this thing is. Phenomenal how lightweight it feels. Yeah, this whole gun weighs as much as my accessories and my rail does on my Mark 18. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I do read Adele's comments. You guys keep talking about the weight. Yes, it's heavy. That was kind of the point to be obnoxious. I deck mine out with all sorts of crap because I think it's fun. No, I wouldn't actually go trekking in the woods with it. I take my Mark 12. But anyway, so. Well, yeah. and, and you know, one of the things we mentioned about the ARs is that they are uh, they're very modular, and yeah. that means that the stuff that goes on can come right back off, you know? Yeah. Exactly. But anyway, super lightweight guy on that one there. And let's say you are looking for something more precise. Let's say you are wanting something for much longer accuracy, maybe a little bit higher rate of fire even, but you want to make sure that your harmonics are in check. We've had a video covering what exactly barrel harmonics are. Uh, so if you'd like to check that out, do it. But ultimately, it's kind of like a guitar string. You've thumbed that every single time and you want to pretty much have those sounds sound smooth. That's why you make these adjustments and everything else. Well, all of that's pretty much been done in research and development for all these barrels and then what caliber works out great for it. So like in this Ballistic Advantage premium build uh, barrel, this guy right here is a obviously a heavy barrel. You can see how just thick it is by the chamber and it pretty much keeps that same consistency all the way up to the shoulder where the gas block meets. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, Sometimes yeah. you can see some slight, depending on the manufacturer, some slight differences. Like you can see there's a kind of a tiny shoulder here. Mm -hmm. In some manufacturers, you'll see that the heavy barrel might actually just be a, a slow, steady taper all the way from the chamber to the gas block. Right. But the important thing is this stays thick. Yeah. Um, like Alec thick. Alec right. thick. Right. And so this guy is chambered in six millimeter arc, which is apparently the all the rage this yeah, year. The, it's what we saw at SHOT Show anyway. But uh, anyway, so, but if you are wanting something that won't exactly be your walking around gun, you're wanting for that accuracy and whatnot, you don't mind its weight per se, it's gonna be more of a bench shooter, mm -hmm. then yeah, a heavy profile might be where you're at. Or if you're going for that cyclic sustained rate of fire, have at it, uh, which I wish we all could. 
Another term you'll sometimes see is bull barrel, which is effectively oh, yeah. just a heavy barrel. They tend to be unthreaded uh, at the end mm -hmm. uh, when you see the term bull barrel used, but that also just basically equates to heavy barrel. Yes, yeah, bull barrel is, I mean, those are typically a lot of metal right around the muzzle, of course, mm -hmm. and it just, it's a thick boy too. But ultimately, this conversation is about what barrel profile works for you. Uh, well, it depends. Are you gonna be attaching a, uh, a bayonet lug, uh, attaching a bayonet, and not wanting to bend your rifle? or your barrel, then just get a government profile, I guess. But uh... So a little anecdote, uh, the first time I built a 762 by 39 upper, I was very frustrated because every barrel I could find on the market was heavy barrel. Yeah. And as much as I do mostly shoot from kind of a bench or standing at a line on a range, I didn't want a heavy barrel. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason for it to be an extremely heavy rifle. So it, it actually took quite a bit, and I ended up having to kind of go for one of those kind of like SOCOM, it's not all the way to a pencil barrel or even really an M4. It was kind of in the middle there. But yeah, sometimes you can be very challenging to find certain calibers in the profile that you might like. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And of course, trying to find the one that's going to work for your purpose. And that's why we kind of talk about any when these build, you know, episodes, mm -hmm. uh, it make it what you want at the end of the day. If you have the option to try out different things, then do it. If not, then make sure you are doing a lot of ad, you know adequate research before you pull the trigger, so to say, and start accessorizing your gun. Uh, if you're like me, you probably have enough parts laying around to build a whole nother gun. I got a couple barrels laying around, some barrels that have detached uh, barrel extensions. I won't need to talk about that. Also an Alec problem, but uh, anyway, I don't know. Just works, what, whatever works for you guys. Again, want to keep it lightweight, simple, effective, Boom, go with yourself more of like a pencil style, right? Or if you're gonna go with something more like duty-like, we just came out with a video about what makes like a, a duty mm -hmm. rifle. Uh, you can check that out and see what that means. So one thing I think is kind of interesting is if you, depending on how old you are, your idea of what an AR kind of looks like yeah. might vary. Like I'm sure that there are people who are a little bit older than me who like this is automatically what pops in their head Yeah. versus, you know, I am probably a little bit more of a later generation M16 yeah. what pops in my head and then you have people who they don't think of anything but an M4. So maybe this distinctive grenade launcher is something you specifically need on your build because that's what your AR15 is in your head. Yeah, maybe. Versus maybe you need that 20 inch pencil barrel because yeah. that's what an AR15 is in your head. Um, but yeah, I mean, what's cool is like, again, these things are Legos and they're super yes. adjustable. So you could start out with one build mm -hmm. and end up moving to a different build yeah. and then end up moving to the M4 down there. Yeah, right. And you've used the same lower, just rebuilt it a couple times, depending on what you like. Yeah, you can have different uppers for everything. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Which is super cool about this system. Um, and what's cool of what you're talking about, too, is like the... AR community these days, right? Or your modern uh, rifle or enthusiast, sportsman, whatever you want to call yourselves these days, uh, two A advocate. Uh, these, my, my, the mind, like that when AR comes in my head, it's like I honestly have moved so far past to uh, having an idea of what one AR looks like. It's kind of like, oh well, uh, yeah, sure, it looks like the basic, you know, like the old Colt, you know, M4 mm -hmm. type, right? And then I'm like, ah, but who uses really a front sight post more any day? So that's like, all right, kind of negate, negate that. Wait, you have a, you know, an, a carry handle? All right, that's pretty cool though, carry handle gang, where you at? And I was like, but you know, flat top, you know, Picatinny, that's kind of new. Oh wait, we're kind of moving away from Picatinny now too. So that maybe I don't have a quad rail. I don't definitely don't just have a dusk. Yeah, so it just keeps going, you know what I mean? And uh, so I think that's actually pretty cool because we're actually taking these rifles, making them what we want to be and having at it. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, by the way, guys, Unfortunately, Matt was not able to really partake in our last Outside the Warehouse Mean well, Comments well, video. I participated, but I wasn't presenting. Like I said, he wasn't able to partake, per se. Uh, and if you're not too sure what I'm talking about, Alec and Katie and myself did our little uh, Mean Comments from SHOT Show. And since I didn't go to shot, take me next time and I'll be able to be in the video. Oh, well, what's cool is though, you can actually partake in this next one because I want you guys all to drop your Mean Comments about Matt right here. Have a good time. Be gentle. There's a lot of subject matter there. <laughs> he gives you a lot of ammunition. All right, pretty boy. Yeah, that's fine. You can call me pretty boy, whatever. I've heard enough from the internet as it is. Uh, anyway, hey, don't miss hey, out. Don't listen. You can also put your positive comments, anything you like about me as well. Um, anything rags on Clint as well. It's all welcome. Especially things that rag on Clint. Or Alec. You know what? Again, yeah, we, can we should agree. gang up on Alec because we, all agree on that. we all agree on that. There is a lot there so that you have 
all of the all of the ammunition you need on that one. And don't forget too to head on over to classicfirearms.com to enter in our current contest, which is not the Mark 18 pistol, which will uh, I'll be sad to see leave whenever That's we awesome. get the paperwork back for that guy. But it is not one but two PWSs. We've got the Mark 111 and the Mark 116. One pistol, one rifle going to two different winners. So that would be pretty fun. Oh, well, I should say this. One winner, one winner, okay? All right, um, by the way, the- What was the of, alternative? Cutting them in half and sending them? I mean, it's possible. I, you, know, you, you could, but that would be terrible. Um, uh, so, but anyway, so like I said, head on over to classicfarms.com to get your entries. And did you uh, see what the code word was for this guy? I haven't yet, no. Oh, do you know what? Well, you know what type of operation system it uses. They're long shirt. Guess they're long shirt, like, like an AK. Mm -hmm. And um, they're long. So the code word. Long? Long, that's it. L-O-N-G, that's your code word, long. That's some high level intellect there. Uh. Yeah, because they're utilizing, <laughs> because they're utilizing the long stroke piston driven system of the AK, but in the body of an AR. It's pretty interesting if you ask me. And they shoot great. Uh, aim points are coming with both of them. Ratcheting. Uh... Castle oh yeah, nuts. and they got the PWS ratchet and castle nut, but yeah, the Aimpoint T2, Aimpoint Comp M4S, big fan of that optic, like it a lot. Surefire Minis, this one's got the pressure pad on it. Uh, angled foregrip, BCM vertical grip there, BCM pistol grip, SBA3 brace, BCM stock on that, and the same grip, and uh, the Mod 2Ms. Yeah, not much more I can say about that. Ambi lowers, by the way, which are pretty cool. This is your bolt release on the side, mag release on the side on that guy there. Super nifty, big fan. So head on over to classicfarms.com, utilize the code word long Aww. to get yourself a couple hundred entries. Don't miss out, God bless. Oh, I did that backwards. Sorry, Matt, I must have confused you. And as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at classicfarms.com. One day, one day we're all gonna get it right, whether it be the intro or the ending, one day. <laughs> one could dream. <laughs>